Hello, welcome to the Man Explain podcast. I'm Connor. Today I'll be talking about the deck I built for Ramsey's Overdark. So the way Ramsey's works is six mana for a four three, but you can tap them to destroy target creature that is enchanted. So that's it's kind of really strong because there's tons of enchantments that you can throw on your opponent's creatures that have effects when they die. They can draw you cards. The enchantment can come back to your hand or back to the battlefield or even steal the opponent's creatures. I hate stealing. It's my least favorite mechanic in all of Magic, but I decided to go that way with this deck because I've never built a steel deck before. And I thought, why not? This, this, this can be my first. And it's kind of ridiculous. The ability to just play an aura on one of your opponent's creatures and then just steal it is, it's its actually insane. Uh, I can't believe how powerful of effect this is. Um, it is a 4-3, so it dies to a braid and lightning bolts and a lightning helix, all the three mana damage things, which means it it's very fragile. But at the same time, the ability to tap and kill your opponent's creatures is kind of ridiculous. So... Yeah, I hope you like the deck and let's jump into it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps with the channel growth and getting these videos out there. And if you could, if you don't mind, share my videos with some of your other friends that play Magic or if you think they'd enjoy them, I'd really appreciate it. So for the deck breakdown, we have 30 theme cards, which are all the different auras in, or aura makers in the deck, which I'll get to one of those later. Very interesting card. Uh, the sub theme are cards that are payoffs for our enchantments going to the graveyard our opponents creatures dying stuff like that uh synergy uh these cards just synergize really well with the commander it is just a catch-all category and because our commander is the keystone of the deck and going to be destroying all of our opponents creatures we are going to need protection for it and then to fill out the deck to make it more consistent we have 11 draw 11 ramp 8 removal 1 board wipe and 38 lands we're only running 8 removal because our commander is removal, and so you don't need to run the 10. Honestly, 8 might even be a bit too high. Uh, we're probably we'd probably better off running less removal and putting more protection in, but at the same time, maybe your opponent will be able to destroy your enchantments or something like that, or counter them or something. So having removal that gets around the needing to use our commander, especially if our commander is dead, we'll also have some removal to use there so that we can hold our removal in hand while our commander's out killing stuff and after they kill our commander we can crack back with that removal that's why i have it in the deck because this is essentially a tr like a typal deck the typal being auras uh it's 33 there's 33 crossover cards because the auras are the thing that the deck's about but they also do other things at the same time and so because of that it makes it bloats the crossover category but at the same time I, I would attribute it to probably around like 15, 16, like true crossover category cards, which means that's still really good. That's over 10, which is the number we're always shooting for. So you love to see it. So like I said before, the theme is just a bunch of auras. They're all pretty cool. I have a bunch of them I'd never seen before. And so I'll get into those now. Starting us off strong, we have the steel category. Uh, these are all auras that can enchant one of my opponent's creatures and then whenever that creature would die airs the battlefield under my control um, Fool's Demise is definitely the best one here because Fool's Demise it does cost five But when the enchanted creature dies Fool's Demise returns to your hand and that creature returns to your battlefield All the other ones here are just one-offs But Fool's Demise you can use over and over and over to essentially just steal the board which is kind of ridiculous and it's whenever fool's demise is put into a graveyard from the battlefield return it to its owner's hand so if someone even destroyed the fool's demise in response to you tapping your commander you would still just get the fool's demise back it needs to be exiled to be taken out of the game or else you just get to use it over and over and over forever it is kind of ridiculous so the next two steel cards in the theme category are Animate Dead and Necromancy. These steal straight from the graveyard. You don't have to have your commander out tap to kill one of the, your opponent's creatures. This just pulls them straight from the yard, which is ridiculous. The reason that's like insane is because say someone has like a triple kid titan, worm coil engine, if that betrays something huge in their graveyard, you can pull it out of their graveyard and enchant it with either Animate Dead or Necromancy. The only thing about these cards is once they're on the creature, if the aura would go to the leave the battlefield 
or go to the graveyard or whatever, the creature all gets sacrificed, so you have to be careful about that. If someone plays a board wipe for all enchantments, say, um, the creature that's enchanted by the animator of the necromancy would also go, which sucks, but that's fine for two or three mana, you get to cheat something from your from anybody's graveyard, which is ridiculous. The only difference between these two here, besides the necromancy costing one more, is animate dead gives the enchanted creature minus one minus. So by the that, these cards are like insanely powerful. I run Animate Dead in the Muldrotha deck, and it is not fair. Next up, we have a bunch of auras that return to your hand after they go to the graveyard, and that's better than some other cards that say, if Enchanted Creature dies, return it to your hand, because this both works if the Enchanted Creature dies or if they destroy the aura. So the aura has that much value because it can just bring itself back without the creature needing to die. But, and if the creature dies, it comes back, it's great. Glistening Oil does have Infect, but at the beginning of your upkeep, put a negative one, negative one on Enchanted Creature. So, potentially, this could just kill a creature. You can put it on a creature, it's, if it's a one, one, comes back around to your turn, it'll just die. You don't need to have your commander down to kill it, which is great. Launch gives the Enchanted Creature flying, and then also returns, that it's also great. And for one and a blue, that's an amazing rate. Uh, the one generic really helps make it easier to cast and then despondency maybe someone has uh, a commander out and they're getting a little bit too high in power there you give them a minus two minus so oh, and then tap your commander to kill them when you need to and then get despondency back all of these cards are awesome and these are the three mana versions of that same effect uh, ghoulish impetus and screams of within though they say the, the creature has to die for the enchantment to come back so if someone just kills the enchantment then unfortunately it doesn't get to come back but sleeper's guile does say that if it if sleeper's guile goes to the graveyard it comes back to your hand all these cards are great though ghoul's impetition goads your opponent's creature or goads the enchanted creature so it has to attack gets plus one plus one in death touch so you can let that creature swing out your opponents a few times then whenever you need it gone you can tap your commander to kill it which is great Screams from within enters the battlefield, not your hand, when the enchanted creature dies, and the enchanted creature gets minus one, minus one. So say your opponent has a board full of 1-1 one, one tokens, you can kill all of them with this one card. It is crazy. It's a board wipe for 1-1s, one, and then, then you could throw it on like their commander or another value creature, and then tap your commander to kill them. Screams from within comes back on something else. It's honestly ridiculous. And then, yeah, Sleeper's Guile gives the creature, I forget if it's Fear or Intimidate, one of the two, uh, but then it can return to your hand when it goes to the graveyard. All these cards are fantastic, and the, rec the recursiveness of them makes the ability to remove creatures with your commander so much stronger. So these next batch of auras can trip. Uh, they all draw a card either when they enter or when the enchanted creature uh, dies. Uh, Necrosynthesis is crazy, though, because... Uh, when the enchanted creature dies, you get to look at the top card, top X cards of your library, or X was its power, and then put those cards into your hand, and put one of those cards in your hand, the rest on the bottom, which is crazy, because also it has whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. So the creature can get huge, and then you can kill it, and then you can look at, say, like five, six, seven cards, pick the best one of those seven, put the rest on the bottom, and that really, that card selection really helps with the consistency of just playing the game, it's great. And then the other three, yeah, they just draw you a card, which is a great little cantrip. Throw it on a creature, tap to kill that creature, you get to cantrip as well, it's fantastic. This next group of auras all draw more than one card, so Casting of Bones, when the Enchanted Creature dies, draw three, discard one, and then Nerd Rage, Rousing Reed, and Flight of Fancy are all draw two. You do have to discard one with Rousing Reed, but that's okay. For three mana, draw two, discard one, and you get to kill a creature, that's fantastic. Nerd Rage is hilarious though, uh, if when you have no you have no max hand size whenever a creature attacks if you have 10 or more cards and it gets plus 10 plus 10 till the end of turn Nerd Rage is a very funny card um, I don't know I, I I might run this in one of my decks I run in a Nash deck which draws a ton of cards and that'd be very fun in that deck But I'm still not sure about it But yeah, uh, all these cards are great to help refill your hand while you're killing your opponent's creatures these are the ores we're actually going to put on our commander instead. Uh, Freed from the Real lets us untap our commander for a blue. Penman's Aura does the same thing. And that's so if we have multiple auras out on our opponent's creatures, we can pay a blue to untap our commander to kill all of our opponent's creatures with our enchanted. We can just keep doing it, which is crazy. That value is kind of insane. And we have other cards in here that care about enchantments, like entering the battlefield we do have some enchantress like effects in the deck so just having some that we throw on our own commander is like honestly fine and kai's ghost form is an insanely amazing piece of protection 
These auras are all removal, so Kazmina's transmutation makes the creature become a 1 1 and loses all abilities. You won't even need to type your commander to kill the creature after this because the creature is essentially out of the game unless they can kill it themselves or remove the enchantment. Uh, Chime of Night, when it is put into a graveyard from play, destroy target non black creature. So you can put on one of your opponent's creatures, tap to kill that creature, and then you get to point removal somewhere else, which is amazing. And then Imprison in the Moon turns a, a, a creature, land or planeswalker, into a waste. It's kind of insane. Imprison in the Moon's ridiculously good removal. Uh, you cannot tap your commander to kill the creature that's imprisoned with Imprison in the Moon because they're no longer a creature. They're just a, they're just a colorless land. But trapping something under Imprison in the Moon will take it out of the game for a long time. These are the two like wacky cards of the category. Uh, and Soul Artifact is really good because say someone has an Elhemrit's Archive, you can use Soul Artifact to turn it into a creature and then your commander can kill it. So it gives you a little more versatility when trying to remove stuff, which is awesome. And then Asinine Antics gives all of your opponent's creatures cursed roll tokens. So roll tokens are aura tokens and the cursed rolls make those creatures into one ones. They don't lose their abilities, but they're just one ones, which means asinine antics and screams from within will wipe the entire board from your opponents. It's kind of crazy because asinine antics turns all of your opponents into one ones and then screams from within gives the enchanted creature minus one minus one. And then when uh, enchanted creature dies, screams from within comes back to the battlefield. So you can just wipe the entire board of your opponent's creatures, one side of board wipe, which is crazy. But yeah, making all of your opponent's creatures one ones is really good because it makes it easier to block and stuff like that. And because it puts an aura on every one of your opponent's creatures, you can tap your commander to kill them all. It's honestly phenomenal. And the fact that you have the option to cast this at flash speed for six mana is very cool. So that was a lot of auras. That was 30 auras. And so because we're running so many of them, the sub theme is going to profit off us running all those auras and then killing our opponent's creatures. So these are all the payoff cards that draw you cards whenever you kill your opponent's creatures or whenever your auras go to the graveyard. It's kind of insane. Mortar Opportunist only triggers once each turn, but that's more than okay. Our Unless we have Penman's Aura free from the reel, I don't think we're going to tap our commander to kill more than one creature a turn so that's awesome three mana every, uh once per rotation of the table draw an extra card it's basically a phyrexian arena but seriously the morbid opportunist is great here hate fly to launch. if we have more than one aura on a creature we get to draw a card for each of those auras when the enchanted creature dies which is absolutely incredible and then ashiox reaper whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw a card which is slightly better than whenever a creature dies because it's like Hateful Eidolon, where whenever, um, for each uh, enchantment or aura or whatever in the, that goes to the yard, we get to draw a card. And even if our opponents try to kill our auras before we can use our commander to destroy the creatures, we'll still get to draw cards. So that's why it costs four mana here, because it's so much stronger than the other two for that reason. It has that kind of built-in protection against people just removing our auras. These are the drain ping effects whenever an enchantment as the battlefield for grim guardian or enters the graveyard for wicked visitor we deal one damage to each of our opponents or they lose life not damage that's an important distinction and that's really strong we're going to be killing their creatures everyone's going to be losing life and it's going to be a very controlling very oppressive kind of thing we're going to be doing which means people are going to be attacking us and i don't think you can really win with this deck because people are going to hate what you're doing stealing their creatures and honestly just constantly draining them life with these guys and stuff so people are going to hate to play against this deck so please don't play this deck but if your play group's okay with tons of stealing effects i guess this might be okay and then the last two here blight caster whenever you cast an enchantment spell it gets a target creature gets minus two minus two until the end of turn so you cast two enchantments in a turn something is something is getting minus four minus four which will just kill most things like that's insane and then Doomwake Giant, whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under control, your creatures, your opponent's control, get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So if you cast two enchantments, that's minus two, minus two. You can really start killing a lot of creatures with Doomwake Giant. It's absolutely insane. So the synergy category is kind of the catch-all category, in all honesty. But these cards all work great with our commander and the strategy we're running for. So Illusionist Bracers, oh my god, duplicating your commander's effect, being able to tap to destroy two creatures per rotation of the table is insane. That's such ridiculous value, and it's going to be very oppressive being able to cast two enchantments, tap this, kill two creatures. Oh my god, that, that 
sounds awful. I hate it, but it is very strong. Root Water Shaman gives all of our auras instant speed, or they, it gives them flash, which is kind of insane, honestly. We can hold open mana, and we can hold open uh, our commander untapped, honestly. And then we can threaten our opponent, uh, killing our opponent's creatures that entered the battlefield this turn, like, like cast their commander or something. We can hold open threatening to kill them, which is very powerful. And then Sir Conrad the Grim. Whenever a another creature dies or a creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature <laughs> leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad deals one damage to your opponent. It, it's kind of insane. Sir Conrad will deal so much damage to your opponents over the course of a game. To so many creatures are going to be dying. If p someone plays any kind of wheel or mill of type effects, creatures are going to be entering the graveyard. And Sir Conrad is just going to be melting your opponent's life totals away. It's honestly ridiculous. And it is damage. So if you say had like, this deck doesn't run any of them, but if you had damage doubling effects or you can honestly, there is one card that has infect in this deck. So you could put infect on Sir Conrad. Uh, yeah, no, it's absolutely insane. And you're probably not going to do it in this deck because you don't want to mill yourself. But say you had a Necromancy or an Animate Dead in your hand, you could put the activate the mill ability on Sir Conrad to try to find a creature that you could then bring back. Sir Conrad has so much versatility in this deck and is such a powerful card. So besides Penmanzor and Freed from the Real, we are going to want on Tappers. Uh, that's so that when we have multiple auras out on different creatures, we can kill more than one per rotation, which is very important because we're not going to... We're not going to commit a lot of creatures to the board because we just don't have a lot. And the way we're going to win is through the value of killing our opponent's creatures, stealing them, draining effects, stuff like that. That's how we're going to win. And so being able to act fair commander more than one time a turn is going to be very important for that because people are going to be gunning for us because we're going to be constantly destroying all of their shit. And so, yeah, the untappers are very important here. These are all the two mana untappers. Technically, Vizier of the Tumbling Sands can untap for two mana, but... Uh, if you really need to cycle them, if you really need to get that card, but you're probably going to pay them for three. And then, yeah, they all just untap your commander. Sting, though, is very interesting because it gives the commander haste, which is very good. And at the beginning of each combat, untap it. So if we have multiple auras out every on our, every turn, including our opponent's, opponent's turn, we can tap our commander down to destroy their creature if it's enchanted. That is insane. Sting is ridiculous here. It's so powerful. And giving our commander plus one, plus one gets it out of Lightning Bolt, a Braid, Lightning Helix range, which is honestly kind of important. And then you've already seen Free from the Real but, and Penman's Aura, but Thousand Year Elixir gives our commander pseudo, pseudo haste for activating its ability, and we can pay one to untap it. Uh, these cards are all great. Uh, already spoke how good Freed from the Real and Penman's Aura are. The Thousand Year Elixir is amazing. I run, I used to run it in a Cranko deck, and it, it's just not fair. The card is ridiculously powerful. And here it's just going to give our commander pseudo haste, which is insane. It's really important for that kind of ability. And I've, I've said it a bunch, our commander is going to get killed. Or at least they're going to try to kill it, and they're going to come after us because this is a very degenerate deck doing very mean things. And so we're going to need protection to protect our commander because people are not going to like what we're doing. So these are all the protection spells in the deck. Uh, Calaf, I think that's how you pronounce that, Beloved of the Sea, gives all of our creatures and enchantments like ward one essentially it's better than ward because it's not uh, get they get counters just everything that targets our creatures and enchantments costs one more it makes it a lot harder to use removal on us because it the removal is going to be less valuable because it's going to cost one more so that adds a kind of deterrent to try to remove our stuff people are still going to try to which is why lightning grief silver boots and lakaya's ghost form can help protect our commander uh, we're not there. We do have some auras. We do have some things that target our commander. So lightning greaves, it kind of non bows with the untappers and stuff like that. But the ability to give our commander shroud so it just can't be targeted by removal is more important than being able to untap it because we need to stop it from dying. Because if it's dying, you can't untap it anyways. So yeah, lightning greaves, swift foot boots are very powerful here. Also, the haste is insane. So we are in Demir, which means we don't have access to the best ramp, but we do have good artifact ramp, and that's, I mean, every color has good artifact ramp, but we are running a couple to get some lands because I prefer land ramp over everything else just because it's safer in Commander. So Wayfarer's Bobble, three mana, go get a basic put onto the battlefield, Solemn some Malacrum, four mana, get a basic put on the battlefield, but it's a 2-2, two -two, and when it dies, you draw a card. So it gives you a blocker for when people are going to be swinging at us, which is great because we get some value back on it. And Wayfarer's Bobble, if we have an untapped land on turn one, turn two, we can crack it. 
it's awesome these cards are both phenomenal and i love how they go get basic lands here is the colorless mana makers soul ring is broken e chalice is probably one of my favorite mana rocks prismatic lens is also up there and mindstone is just a solid card and then finally we have all the mana rocks that make colored mana so arcane signet demir and talisman they all give us the option for either of the colors while sky diamond and charcoal diamond are just one of the colors but we're going to need all of these mana rocks because our commander costs six it's going to die we're going to need to recast it and we're going to be slinging a bunch of cheap auras so we're going to be multi-spelling in a turn so having the mana to help do that is great like i said at the beginning we don't need a lot of removal because the removal is in our command zone but that being said like i also said at the beginning our commander is going to die so we do need access to some removal while our commander is afk so the repeatable removal I put in this deck, Vizera the Dreadful, Agent of Fate of the Fates, and Avatar of Woe. They can all destroy creatures multiple times. Vizera and Avatar, they tap to destroy target creature, which is honestly ridiculous. And then Agent of the Fates, whenever you cast a spell that targets it, each opponent sacrifices the creature. And Auras target. So you can cast an aura onto Agent of the Fates, and then it will destroy a creature, which gets around the whole needing our commander bit. Agent of the Fates is just a better version of our commander here, honestly. It's kind of ridiculous. Some of the auras can kill Agent of the Fates, so you do have to be careful about that, giving them negative one, negative counters and stuff like that. But all the cheaper ones that just like cantrip and stuff, oh my god, it's going to be ridiculous. Agent of the Fates here is so strong. So there's really only one wipe in the deck. Yes, we do have a build your own board wipe with Asinine Antics and Screams from Within, but I wouldn't call that a board wipe because it's two cards that we can't tutor for. But the one board wipe that is in the deck is Doomwake Giant. And so this card is very interesting because it's whenever it or another enchantment enters, we get to give negative one, negative one to each creature our opponent controls. And that's really strong because one, they'll get rid of all of the one ones, two ones, all stuff like that. It gets around indestructible as well. It gets around hexproof and shroud and all that too. It gets around ward. And because it's not targeting, it's just a flat, all of your stuff gets smaller. And we do have some auras that when they hit the yard, they come back to the battlefield. And so Doomwake Giant doing that, that can really like go off and get it up to two or three or four maybe even five if you can really string it together properly and you can just annihilate a board if you really get it going properly maybe if you have some of the auras that cantrip you can cast a couple of them wipe the board and stuff yeah do make giant is insanely powerful here and um it's it's kind of crazy also at a four six it's just a good blocker because people are going to be attacking us so the land package is pretty bog standard for a demir deck but i am running three lands that i did want to highlight because they're all quite useful in this deck honestly those three lands being bajuka bog arcane lighthouse and detection tower now i know we're running animate dead and necromancy but if our opponent's running a graveyard recursion strategy or some, something to do with the graveyard in some way or form we're going to be sending stuff to the graveyard constantly we're going to want to have a way to exile their graveyard so bajuka bog is just a good effect we don't want to run a lot of it but just it being on a land as an incidental value is super useful Arc and then Arcane Lighthouse and Detection Tower can remove Hexproof and Shroud, and then Detection Tower can just remove Hexproof, which lets us target with our auras and then tap our commander to kill. That's honestly really important because if someone drops a Hexproof creature, we are SOL, and that's really bad. So, yeah, Arcane Lighthouse and Detection Tower here really help with the whole killing our opponent's creatures thing. Also, I'll say it in every video uh wizards please put the battle bond lands in the commander precons they're designed for multiplayer format so please put them in the multiplayer for uh, products thank you so much i had a very difficult time making cuts for this deck uh i was at 115 for a hot minute trying to figure out what auras to cut which like synergy cards to cut and stuff like that and just what value pieces to cut and what enablers and like it's just very difficult and i'm happy with where the deck's now but there are some cards in the maybe category that I really want in the deck it just they quite couldn't make it aura finesse is a very funny card pay one mana move an aura from one creature to another creature and then draw a card it's um ah it's good it's really good I I just we're not we're not gonna really need to be doing that Aura finesse is more as like if we cast an aura on a creature like if we're doing like a Voltron strategy and we have one of our auras we want on one of our other creatures we need to put on commander or something I just don't see it being super useful in this deck because we have so many auras I don't think having a slot just to move one of them I'd rather have an aura than have aura finesse honestly because we can always just cast it on another creature I know it's only one mana and it cantrips but 
man, it is it is close to being like the 101st card in this deck. Warehouse Tabby is really interesting because it's whenever an enchantment you control is put into the graveyard, you make a 1-1 rat that can't block. The reason I cut this is because it can't block. Also, it goes infinite with Screams from Within because Screams from Within enters the graveyard. Um, when the, the enchanted creature dies, it comes back. It gives the enchanted creature minus one, minus one. So it, it'll you can go on the black rat creature token that Warehouse Tabby makes. It'll kill it, goes to the yard makes another one and it'll just go infinite that way and that's infinite etb ltb for a token creature and for an aura and with some of our drain effects that would just immediately win us the game and i'm not about that so i cut warehouse tabby for that reason and then thornbite staff it's expensive and the equip cost is four and it is probably just a strictly better version than uh what's that other called card called looseness bracers because whenever uh, a creature is put into a graveyard from play you get to untap your commander and so this is probably the best untapper that you could add to the deck it's kind of insane and with screams from within it is just a build your own board wipe as well but man uh it is a little too expensive and the combo with screams from within just feels a little too mean i'm sure if you wanted to run it it would feel great being able to board wipe your opponents all the time and with warehouse tabby making going infinite that way but man i just i just couldn't put my i just couldn't do it i couldn't put it in it is too mean i i'm a naya player at heart this this deck hurt to make the last group of cards here gisa and grave betrayal both will steal our opponent's creatures when they die oh my god that is insane <laughs> Uh, I ended up not running them because they are, again, it just felt way too mean to be able to steal stuff that consistently. Uh, it's, oh my god, it just felt so mean, and I just, I just couldn't do it. I honestly just couldn't do it. Same thing with Thought Render Lamia. I just, when it, it or another champion enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. That's just so rude. I, I, again, I couldn't do it. Same thing with Rootwater Matriarch. Like, all these cards are so strong, and they probably should be in the deck. Even Demon of Fate's design, like being able to cast an aura for uh, your life rather than its mana value once a turn. Oh my god, all these cards are so good. It's just, they felt so mean to put in the deck. I just couldn't do it. Uh, I couldn't do it. But Grave Betrayal probably does go in the deck, though. That card is ridiculous. So what'd you think of the deck? Uh, I hate it. I hate it. It is gross. It is awful. It is quite strong. And I, <laughs> I hate it so much. But let me know what you think. Don't run it. If you would, let me know, but please don't. Don't make don't make your friend group hate you or me for building this absolute monster. It is probably one of the strongest Legends Commanders because you can do all of this with it. It has all this tech and all this synergy, but man, it's awful. Holy crap. I am glad it dies to Lightning Bolt because this is a kill on site commander. I can't believe I'm saying that, but holy crap. With this deck, this is definitely a kill on site commander because if you let the player untap with this you are going to have a bad time so yeah uh, let me know what you think though and have you ever played against ramsey's overdark or played it these are all my socials twitters when i post where these videos go live i will eventually make content for Twi tiktok and reddit and then all of my deck lists live on architect and moxfield so thanks for watching and as always get building splainers all right that is so